son of Jonathan, who was crippled in both feet. And David set Mephibosheth at the king's table continuously. Now some would take that and talk about a sinner saved by grace. But you know, Mephibosheth was part of the royal family. Mephibosheth was seated at the king's table every day to participate by the king's grace. Oh man, we can never forget that. Never forget that. Come with me, if you would, tonight. Matthew. Matthew chapter 10. Let's we'll start reading Matthew chapter 10 and verse 40. He who receives you, Matthew 10, 40. He who receives you receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. He who receives a prophet in the name of a prophet such a reward. And he who receives a, a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones only a cup of water, only a cup of cold water, in the name of a disciple, assuredly I'll say to you, he shall by no means lose his reward. Now turn with me to Mark chapter 9, verse 41. Mark 9, 41. Whoever gives you a cup of cold water to drink in my name, because you belong to Christ, assuredly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. For whoever causes, but whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and you were thrown into the sea. If a hand causes you to sin, cut it off. Better for you to enter into life maimed rather than having two hands and go to hell. Into the fire that shall never be quenched. Where? I die and the fire is not. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It's better for you to enter life lame rather than having two feet. To be cast into hell, into the fire that will never wear. The worm does not die, and the fire is not quenched. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Eh, better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye, rather than having two eyes and be cast into hellfire, where the worm does not die, quenched. For everyone will be seasoned with fire. Every sacrifice will be seasoned with salt. Salt is good. The salt loses its flavor how we season it and yourselves have peace with one another Lord God in heaven I pray as we think about these things Father the salt in ourselves that we not become complacent Father because we have all we need even seated at the king's table. Father, it's like David was concerned about the descendants from the house of Saul that 
he might show favor to them. Help us not to be satisfied and to grow sleepy. To become apathetic. To work while it's still called today. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. I wanted to include a picture of the cow. Well, we are familiar with the cow. That is the cow okay, that we bought a year ago in November for uh, Mama Nina. That cow and the mean cow is still in the possession of Mama Nina, and the mean cow is chained in the same pasture as uh, this cow. Now, this cow would not let me get any closer than this uh, tour, but this is this is the cow. Now, I think it was I think it was this uh, just this last spring that Vera was here. Remember uh, Vera? She is the regional director of the um, Dergence District of the Red Cross. That's uh, her husband, and that's their uh, backyard, and uh, their old dog. I think you know the other two guys there. We had, uh, we had supper at uh, Vera's house. You know, she has a lot of contact because she's charged by the Red Cross with the uh, with uh, a lot of the responsibility for that uh, Dzerzhinsk um, district. Now the district is like a county within a region. It's in the, the Minsk region and uh, she is the director of that county. But she has a great relationship with the county seat with what we would refer to as the uh, county uh, commissioners. So as the Red Cross representative, she has her finger on the pulse of much of the, the needs in the community. So um, a great contact. Now, actually, it was, it was the interpreter, Yulia, who was here, who was at kids camp, who knows Vera, who really introduced us to Vera for the very first time because she said, I know this lady who uh, helps a lot of people, kind of on her own, kind of through the Red Cross, kind of through her church, but she really has a heart. I'd like for you to meet her. And so uh, Steve and I met uh, Vera, very uh, impressed with her uh, zeal. And so that we kind of, at that first meeting, said, look, because she told us uh, about some needs. I believe... Uh, Bob and I were there, and Steve, uh, Steve may, we may have been one of those trips where we overlapped. And we gave her some money, and then we came back, and she took us around and showed us where she put the money. We bought some wood for a fella. Uh, we've just done a lot of, a lot of things through uh, Vera. And this month, the food for Vera, it's been a great opportunity to be able to purchase food and uh, take this food to needy individuals. Now, here's uh, Vera and, uh, again, her husband. And this is the preacher at uh, Vera's church, Olek, the interpreter. You know this guy. This guy's a singer back here. He's kind of a photo bomb in the whole thing there. So, um, but... Um, I, uh, I got to speak at Vera's church that evening after uh, supper on their Wednesday night. They had a two-hour prayer meeting. I got invited back this November to hold a two-hour uh, seminar. I was just uh, a couple weeks ago got an email from Olick that there are four other churches invited on that uh, Wednesday night. There's a, a camp uh, we visited, and... All these children are suffering from some sort of developmental uh, 
disability. Um, and they were having a camp, and all of them knew uh, Vera. I mean, the moms knew Vera, the kids knew Vera, so this isn't an administrative position that she holds. She is, uh, she is in uh, the community. You've all heard about Tanya. We stopped that morning and got two parcels of groceries. Tanya was one of the houses that we dropped those groceries off. It was only Vera's second or third, third time visiting uh, Tanya. The groceries in, took some pictures outside, found out there's no, no running water. Mom's just out of prison. Brother's a drunk. Find out later that Tanya's being physically and sexually abused in that situation. She doesn't want to leave her mom. But couldn't have got involved, couldn't have got in the house without groceries. It was the groceries that got us in. And actually, it was about $15 worth of groceries that got us in the door. Now, I tried to enlarge this picture, but my technical skills are, are not much better than my mechanical skills. Yeah, here's her, here's her wheelchair. Here's the doorway. Number one, the wheelchair doesn't collapse. won't go in the doorway. Number two... If you did get it in the doorway, she can't get out the doorway. <laughs> you see? So what she does is scoot to the doorway, bounce on this concrete thing, and then into the wheelchair. My understanding is Steve is taking one of the wheelchairs from Kosovo, collapsible, I hope, so she can get it. Look at the, look at the bottom of this door. Thirty-eight years old. Six years ago, he fell off a roof, broke his neck. He said it's a miracle he's alive. His comment is some miracle. Mom and dad were taking care of him. Dad's left. Mom died the first of the year. This, this curtain behind me is where you walk into the room. This, this is it. I mean, there's a TV about where well, Adam could reach. Adam could touch the TV from where he sat. And Pops is taking care of him. Now, that's the fella. Bedpan. Too big. He lost weight. In the past six years. He can't get to the hospital to supply him a bedpan. Goes to the bathroom, he's in his own filth. You know what got us in the door? Groceries. Fifteen dollars worth of groceries. And and her little red cross badge. You know, groceries are important. I don't like to be, obviously, I don't like to be hungry. And as important as the groceries are, honestly, the groceries are a means to an end. They are the reason that we are, we are there. Homeless guy at the soup kitchen. Random picture. You know,
His soul is valuable as the pitcher who defected from Cuba. And that story is repeated in Wasion. That story is repeated all over the world. The story is repeated. But, you know, I've been... We're very fortunate in this country because you almost have to be derelict not to have enough to eat. There are enough food giveaways in Fulton County that if you're uh, if you're over 60 years old, income people are giving away food. I'm thankful for that. That's that's but. So why do I have to why do I have to go all the way to Belarus to buy groceries? Look. Sometimes people get free food and they don't like it. And they don't eat it. An unheard of concept. See? Infrastructure. If there's not the abundance, then whether you like it or not. Pretty happy. Something hot. Some bread. Little group right here. Vacation Bible School. Bought a refrigerator. Or crisis center. Went, took the money with us. We went over there. Went to the store. This is the guy loading up the refrigerator. Pictures of Adam carrying it in. So here's the refrigerator in the room. It's going to be a crisis center that uh, people can stay in when the domestic situation is being sorted out and they need to be uh, separated for the children's sake, for their own uh, safety. I've never quite seen anything like this. I thought this is really interesting. This is this is OSB board on the floor, shellac over the uh, the OSB board. It's kind of cool looking, really. I mean, it kind of kind of looked neat. I wouldn't, yeah. So <clears throat> we'll see how it works. But then you know, uh, throw rugs on it. But then this comes from somebody who really you know is. Uh, great with stained concrete on the floor too. So, you know. I stuck this in here because oftentimes we go. There. This is a this is a church in in Borvani. The the preacher there about five years ago. He uh, he would ice fish. I mean, he liked to ice, and he fell through the ice. Now. His, uh, his, sets his wife with his, uh, with her back to us there. But anytime I'm there, it's an open uh, forum to, to come to their Wednesday night and, and study. And basically, instead of setting in pews like this for their Wednesday night, this is what they do. Now they meet, you know, they, uh, but this is kind of their, their Wednesday night. And there's always a tea, there's always, uh, you know, pastries, there's always, something to eat but you know when eating isn't something that is taken for granted it takes on it takes on quite a significance this significant part of their their fellowship on Wednesday night is to bring things in to share with each other whole lot share sharing means a whole lot more See? you're not just sharing from your abundance you're sharing what you have this is this is a preacher's wife guy who fell through the the uh, ice and every time she tells me how they you know 
built this little church with right right from nothing. So your individual lives. This is Olick, our interpreter. His name, but her daughter's name was Tamara. Now, I met Tamara, first family camp we did over there. And that's Tamara's mom. We visited this lady, prayed with this lady, and she died two days later. When we were gone, she, you know, she, she died two days later. I saw Tamara. In Mogulov, we didn't get a chance to talk too much. Ask her how she was doing. As we were leaving, she was she was sobbing. And Adam said to me later, "Man, that woman was hanging on you, crying." Or they were. I said, "Yeah, well, you know, there's, there's kind of a history there." My point is that groceries say. And when we go back, people don't care how much we know until they know how much we care. Yeah, they do. Yeah, they do. And this isn't, oh, we ought to. Well, I feel guilty because we cut the crust off our bread. But it's not a big leap to it being all about me, all about my likes, and all about my dislikes, all about my comfort level. Because as your as your comfort level is, is adjusted, you okay, then you expect the, the minimum of that comfort level. You know, Tanya's expectation of a minimum of comfort level is very much different than my expectation of a minimum comfort level. Some of that is Western civilization. Some of that is. If I'm not, if I'm not salty enough, if I'm not aware enough, if I'm not willing to be uh, the seasoning To bring the compassion of Jesus. Demonstrated that, that you're willing to do that. See? And, you know, Jesus had compassion on hungry people. But, again, all, it's not just groceries. All of this, everything, basically, is a means to an end. It's simply an illustration of the spiritual reality. But if the salt loses its saltiness, it's not good for anything. Well, the danger may be A situation where they're hungry might throw up their hands and say, what's the use? There's an equal danger of the and the satisfaction and the tokenism
of a of a church that the world says you're you're rich. Jesus said, "Man, you never buy some. You never buy staff because you got a reputation." But a bit of self-satisfaction is set in, and we take a look at your first love. Thank you, thank you all for helping me, and not just so I can big the be the big swana and take food in, but thank you for what that's done to me. Not for the help that, but how it's changed me, and and how the realization can, can change each one of us. Let's pray. Lord God in heaven, as we take up a night, knowing that a little bit. You a long way in your hands. And Father, that you have crossed paths with us and people like Vera, countless people, Father, who are strategically placed in situations to direct us so, so that it's your eyes, it's your feet, it's your hands, it's your direction. You don't have to uh, go into these things blind and just, uh, uh, Father, uh, but that we can engage individuals. And Lord God, uh, thank you that you've allowed me to be a part of this. And thank you that you've allowed each one of us here to participate in this and father that as we give monies to this just like uh, just like Adam said uh, Lord God kind of gets uh, gets under our skin and then uh, when we realize that uh, father how precious mankind is to you in the name of Jesus I pray Let's stay.